you didn't celebrate your 21st birthday. Today, 123 years later, you are celebrated. You are remembered, a legend, a light, shining bright even in your absence. An ancestor whose story far surpassed the details of your death. A part of history that will let in peace be the way that you rest. No one remembers the name of the people who took your life. They don't get the glory for spreading bitterness and strife. But you, Joseph McCoy, a black boy, born to Anne and Samuel as reconstruction ended and the era of Jim Crow started, whose death left many brokenhearted before your life as a man officially began. A horrible trend in black history, another tragedy, but your history will be, will be one to remember alongside others who were also lynched, shot, and hanged. But we will remember your name because your history is within my pen now, within my words now, a black writer who decided to write about you in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But still today, we are left with the question, who could you have grown to be if they would not have killed you? Mm -hmm. There it is. And it's the, basically the Ooh. same story, which is the mm. best part. Yeah. yeah, that's, um, mm -hmm. wow. And it's such a weird feeling, you know, when you have, because I have a poem, um, one of my favorite poems called Wokeness, and it just talks about people being woke. And I, I wrote this poem, like, almost like five years ago. And, mm -hmm. and I'm finding that even like digging through old poems, even of the kids in my program at DC Scores, like it's the same shit. Mm -hmm. You can get a top, like some of these topics from 10 years ago and literally it will be the same narrative that's happening right now. Right. It's sickening. It's right. Sickening. And I'm like, that's the, that's the frustrating part about it. And then, you know, I also said, um, you know, when I was on the conference call and talking about uh, being commissioned to write the poem for, uh, I would say, Joseph McCoy for uh, George Floyd. See, it's the same names, you know, can't even get the name straight. Okay, so um, I said, you know, I cannot write a poem about George Floyd. You know why? Because it would be disrespectful to all of the other people who has the same story. You understand what I'm saying? I said, I can't just focus on one person. So I don't know what it is that I will write. I was like, you know, what about Breonna Taylor? We're not talking about Breonna Taylor, you know? And I think oftentimes women who um, are, are killed by the police and I think they uh, get overlooked. You know what I'm saying? I think this is a, a thing of overlooking. And, and then for me let, me, let me also share this. In 1991, my sister was killed. I know I don't talk about this very often, right? She wasn't killed by the police. But in 1991, my sister was murdered. She was stabbed 26 times and left in the backyard. Now, I know this is things that you guys probably don't even know because I don't talk about. So this is, a, you know, this is also very triggering for me because I know what it's like for those families to be on the news because this was an unsolved murder, right? So I know what it's like for be, to be on the news and people saying, hey, please, can we get justice for him? Anybody know anything? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know what that's like. You know, but it, I think it's also tragic, tragic when you know who did it and then there is no consequences for who did it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you walk around free as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And it's, it's un, and you're unable to, un you're unable to shield yourself from it because it's everywhere and everybody wants to talk about it, you know? Mm hmm Oh yeah. I mean, I, I want to go off on a whole tangent. I want everybody to read their poems, but I got a whole lot to say about my uh, position and um, <laughs> some things. So yeah, we're going to get into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Who, who, whoever who want to go? Sherry want to do it? Yes, yeah, Sherry. All yeah, right. Sherry. Mine is short, so you go. All right. <laughs> All right. So this piece I wrote um, since the quarantine and uh, which is amazing because for this past couple of years, I know some people say writer's block doesn't exist. I haven't been able to get out a full poetic thought in years. Huh. So I was really happy that this came out. Um, one of the youth poets out of Baltimore um, who I hadn't seen in a while posted a piece that she had written about why she had stopped performing poetry, why she'd stopped performing. Um, and I saw a couple of other people take that prompt why I stopped performing and wrote their own pieces. Uh, Slangston wrote one as well. And 
from that, I wrote this. And I have decided to leave it in its unedited, unperfected poem because I want it to remain its raw thought. Mm. I stopped performing poetry because I didn't see how I would translate because I didn't see how I translate through all these different size screens. I can't control how all of this love, sexy, classy, nasty can be stretched and condensed and this epicness must be met and this epicness can never be misrepresented. And these words come with a beat face, a dress and heels and I wanna give every audience the full Simply Sherry experience. I've stopped performing poetry because quarantine translated into staycation. Take a break, get the rest, release some stress, say goodbye to the always on the go, 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 and say to, to, to stillness, say hello. Trying to keep up with all the available opportunities could crowd out this silence. And I'm taking this unexpected intermission because one day the next act will begin, the rat race will resume, and who knows when I will see a downtime like this again. I stop performing poetry because while I'm an introvert, while my introvert is enjoying the isolation, my old uninvited companion depression visits regularly. And as soon as I feel like I've got the grasp on all things, have the energy to do all things, I find myself immobile on the couch and feeling tears on my cheeks. And I don't want to commit when I'm unsure that if I can never give it my best. Mm. I've stopped performing poetry. I've stopped performing poetry because I'm still hosting two venues and I've created a platform to help remind viewers that poets are people too. They twist words and soar on stage while struggling through life challenges. They have a life off stage. We keep the mic on to turn that page. We are building so that when all of this is over on Sundays, we will still be there. Mm. I stopped performing poetry because I am fortunate to still be employed, working, collecting a full paycheck. This is not the reality for the rest of my poetry family. And these poets have products to sell. Some of these features and slams are paying. And I would rather see those dollars ensure that those other poets are getting paid. Some days, occasionally, you can catch me performing a poem on social media but I still long for the day when I will strap on my four inch heels and stride to the straight, stride to the stage, drink in the applause, gaze upon a live audience, exhale and recite a poem. Gosh. Damn. <laughs> I felt that. Yeah, that part. <laughs> that part. <laughs> Woo. Right. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. It's uh, virtual events are great. Yeah. So twisted. Mm -hmm. Some I miss my people, man. Yeah. Wait a minute. You want to hear? You want to hear? I, I I sent this in a um inbox to my pajama jammy jam slam crew yesterday. Yeah. Um, in my travels over the past couple of days, I have been around Bus Boys and Poets Brooklyn. And I have been at Bus Boys and Poets Tacoma Park. I looked in the room into the staging area at Bus Boys and Poets Tacoma Park, and they are storing like like all the extra to go to containers. And what? yes, they're in, the, they're in the they're in the open mic room. I wanted to cry. Yikes! <laughs> through the window. Yikes! I wish I wasn't alone so somebody could have taken a picture of me with my face pressed up against the window. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, I saw your I saw your photo. Yeah, that was me standing yeah, outside, but I needed a picture with my face pressed up against the window, just trying to look in like I miss my home. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. it's just mm -hmm. oh yeah. I mean, there are a lot of perks to virtual events and no yeah. no shade to them at all, but it's oh man, I, I miss my people. I miss the live painting. I miss yes. I miss the vibe. I I miss like yeah, yeah. I miss yeah. the energy. Yes. I miss the good poets. I miss I miss the, the, the weird, the interesting poets that just be showing up. You know what I'm saying? I, I miss all the poets but one, miss, but we're going to leave I, that alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one. We all know who that poet is. 
that no, no, can no, stay no, in quarantine. No, no, that that no, boy no, can no, stay no, in quarantine. No, period. No, 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 you somebody somebody miss charity. Hello. <laughs> that poet can stay in quarantine. I agree. Go ahead, Danielle, your turn. Um, so I had a hard time picking which home I wanted for tonight because so much of what I've I've written could, you know, come back around. It's like insane. Um, but this is one that I don't do very often that is very near and dear to me. So um, it's from the last book that I did. Um, the last book is called Last Week I Thought I Was a Toaster Oven and everything in it dealt with, um, it was poems about going to therapy. And this one I feel like is very pertinent to right now. So this is called a a mostly internal dialogue explaining to my very white therapist where all of my anxiety issues come from. I cry, but always when people aren't looking, check my tone, try not to be surprised anymore. Avoid triggering conversations when possible, have yet to master a poker face. Code switches easily as you sleep at night. I hug everyone like it's goodbye because it actually might be. My mouth will always say be safe instead. You don't have any black friends, do you? Do I make you uncomfortable talking about death? When I told you that I am scared that people want to kill me, that wasn't my nihilism talking. Have you watched the news today or yesterday or the day before that? You ask if the source of some of my anxiety is because I'm black. I'm also queer. I'm also a woman. I'm also a fucking unicorn, a black unicorn with a goddamn rainbow horn. But since you chose to focus on the obvious, you don't have the stomach or the context for this. The truth is I only have the energy to address one issue at a time. So yes, I say with no additional explanation. And it sits in a room like a Confederate statue in the middle of it until you acknowledge it. You don't, you don't understand that, do you? This freedom you have to be able to decide when and how to acknowledge something. I'm not afforded such luxuries in this skin and what a strange dynamic this is. I'm supposed to be honest here, right? But how honest can I be when I have to acknowledge that there are things that I will always have to explain and explain and explain and explain. See, I'm mindful not to tell you everything at once. Retelling is really burdensome for me. The explanations to justify the fact that I was born a brown girl as if such thing was necessary is burdensome for me. But what is the black girl without a burden? I can't afford fragility. Hell, I can barely afford the basics. And I really want to explain this shit to you, but I spend every day explaining and explaining and explaining and explaining. I mean, have you actually watched the news today or yesterday or the day before that and explaining when is the last time you read the comment section and explaining, do you know what a microaggression is and explaining, no, you can't touch my fucking hair and explaining, I mean, I can't speak for all black people and explaining when's the last time someone told you to get over slavery and explaining my daughter's bully, my daughter's bully called her a stupid nigga and explaining. And I know you've never said the N word, but how many of your friends have and explaining and I'll get over slavery when you stop trying to drag me back into it and explaining reverse racism is not a thing, but white privilege definitely is. And explaining having a black friend, boyfriend, lover, husband, gardener, bus driver, hairstylist, teacher in sixth grade does not make you not racist and explaining strong black women aren't supposed to break and explaining did I tell you I can't watch tv anymore because sometimes I'm almost afraid to open social media too many black bodies stay dying on video makes it feel like a public lynching and explaining you really want to know where all of my anxiety comes from explaining and explaining and explaining and explaining yes true 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 Come on. Get it, Danielle. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And y'all never heard that piece. Mm -hmm. I very rarely do it. Mm -hmm. Fire. I very rarely do it. Fire. It feels mm -hmm. like it's just, it's so heavy for me to do that because it's, it's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. 
And I love my therapist, don't get me wrong. And she's actually heard this poem. Mm -hmm. I need to start spitting to my therapist. She don't need, she don't. I wrote a whole book about going to therapy. Literally, literally the entire book is every poem that I wrote in the three years that I was going to therapy. I still go. I mean, I, we have virtual sessions all the time. I advocate for, I advocate for mental health care. Right. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. This is save my ass all day, every day. Save Amen. my life. Yeah. In the three years. And that was one of those ones that came up at the beginning. And I'm mad that it's still relevant. Now, right. Like, and that's, I think that's the whole thing that, uh, that where the anger comes from, right? I think mm -hmm. that is, um, why we're live? Why, 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 we're, why we're live on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, why we out here? Why we're live on Facebook and, and one of the, uh, a reporter who uh, works for Alexandria uh, online newspaper or magazine um, is uh, saying that I am awful because I'm not doing anything right now writing about anything um about covid and about um black lives matter and i was like listen i have a whole child who is 17 right now um right now she's in she'll be back tomorrow but she's in california right now she's in inglewood actually so she is like right in the middle of all the protesting and everything and i am trying to comfort her while she's like oh mom this is getting you know, worse, it's, it's getting worse and worse. So what am I supposed to tell her? Oh, no, baby, it's better than it was in the 60s, right? And I mean, what I said was, you know, actually, when my dad was in Vietnam, my dad was in Vietnam when he was 19. A uh, shout out to my dad, high five to the sky. He was the only person to survive in his platoon. Mm. Um, came back with a purple heart, no friends, right? Wow. But he told me that the only way that Vietnam ended is because the photographers got in and showed what was really happening right mm -hmm. so yeah. i think that we're That's absolutely right we're in the space of that right now you know these horrible things that we're seeing and i think that you know i talked about how um you know brianna taylor gets left out of this story you know when she was actually um you know uh, murdered by the police before george floyd was but i think the reason that so many people are so um sympathetic and emotional where George Floyd is concerned is because we saw it you know it's something that you you saw you know it's not like you heard the story you read the story you heard somebody say it, 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 you actually saw it with your own eyes right so I think that that's the space that we're in like uh, like I was telling my daughter you know we these things were happening but you know back in the day you only had the news of your city or state you right. know you only had local news Unless you have family in another city and say you never knew what was happening, right? Mm -hmm. But these things are happening. And the fact that we are recording this and showing this, this is the only way that a change is going to come. Right. People are, are, are going to say these things keep happening. Over yeah, I, I agree. I wholly agree with you. I also feel like part of the part of the issue with Brianna Brianna Taylor is that more so not not even i mean the big issue is we didn't see it but the bigger issue is that a lot of times black women get left out of the narr narrative period that's what yeah, I'm this is a double conversation this is a double brianna's, conversation brianna's is a double black conversation women get left out of the narrative all actually time. it's women actually brianna's yeah. case is a triple conversation mm. one is about black women being taken out of the narrative two nobody saw it and three the law under which that whole shit happened right and, 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 and actually it's four because there it's, it's kind of lost in the sauce of larger things also at work. Mm -hmm. there, were already, there were already two other high profile cases happening by the time we found out about, about her. Yeah. Yeah. Amar, right. Aubrey, and it was already George Floyd by the time we even found, found out. Breonna Taylor. Because it was too no. much. Yeah, it was too they much. Happened to, they, two of them happened on the same, pretty much came out on the same day. Yeah, like it's like it's like we found out about Aubrey, then we found out about we found out about Aubrey, then we found out about Brianna, and then like two days later, George Floyd happened. Yes. And and then that's been and, and of course, oh wait, and then also in that same news cycle, which we're gonna call like that whole one week news cycle, Central Park Karen happened. So it was just so oh much. God. There was there was a lot coming at us at the same time, mm -hmm. but I feel like this is a continual thing where black women yeah. get lost in the sauce mm -hmm. uh, if there's nothing unless there is literally nothing else happening which is not the case 
and has mm -hmm. been for some time, we get lost in there somewhere. Yeah. And if anything good came out of this so far, at least in Louisville, Kentucky, they have outlawed those no-knock warrants. Yeah, correct. That was good. I saw that. I did, and I'm yeah. going to um, link you all to a podcast that I listened to called Getting Off. The uh, Yes, it sounds as funny as it is. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's a funny title. It is two defense lawyers out of Wisconsin and the general ethos of their uh, show is that they will take a case, um, a case that has already been adjudicated and they will normally walk you through a walk you through it so that by the end of it, you have an understanding of how they got to that verdict. Um, this week, uh, the title of the show, I forgot what the title of the show, but the only thing in the notes was the one where Jessica gets pissed off. It's a white, it's a white lady, <laughs> and a black, it's a white lady and a white guy. But the note was the one where Jessica gets pissed off. And the, her first line in the podcast is this shit pisses me off. And she talks about the no knock warrant and basically the fact of the flimsy evidence that they had to go to try to get what they were looking for from her house. And um, even if they believed what they believed was going on at her house, y'all could have waited for them to leave the house if you really wanted to arrest her and then search the house. Y'all did not have to go in there at one to o'clock in the morning. So. Uh, hmm. And put eight fucking holes in her body. like that's Well, yeah, the, the shooting and the shooting started according, uh, again, I'm, I'm going completely through the record if, and I'm doing this off memory. According to the reports I've heard, he called the boyfriend called the cops because, hey, I think somebody's breaking into my house. Nobody around heard them announce that they were police. Um, so he calls the cops like, hey, somebody's breaking into my house. Um, so he's legally carries, he legally, he has a registered gun um, he shoots one cop because, hey, somebody's breaking into my house. I don't know who this is. And it's because he shot all the other cops shot. And here's what he's mm -hmm. there on this no knock warrant. So I hear mm -hmm. uh, to find someone who no longer lived there and had not lived there in some period of time. Actually, she who they were looking for, she had dated at some point in the past. In the right. past. In the, past. Way in the past, like it had been like way in the past, life. and was in jail. Yeah. What they were look, he, the person they were looking for was in jail. In jail. Already. And with that's that, the thing. How come you didn't know that those, these people were in custody? That's that's my that part. part. It's so that sloppy. Part. It's right. So that sloppy. part. It's so sloppy. It's crazy. And then and then and then the, the last thing to close it off was it had something to do with we're in the middle of the quarantine, y'all. How many of us have been doing a little bit of internet shopping? Everybody. She's had a lot of boxes come into the house lately and we were, um, you know, that's, and because we know that they had been together and he had sent some boxes there, they must've been drugs. They never talked to the post. So listen to that podcast when you hear it. Yeah, listen to that podcast. Oh yeah. Well, I, I just want to point out before, Char Char do you have a point for us? Go ahead, Charity. Yeah, that part. I just want to point out too that I was reading the comments and um, she's humble. Yeah, no, you ain't read a poem when you're going to. Don't make that face. You're going to read a poem because yeah. the rest of us yeah. did. Posting today. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're going Posting to read a poem. Oh, Post. that's a good point. Very good point. Posting poem. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that see, I wanted to point out that C. Thomas said is Black women and the Black LGBTQ community are always left out, which is the truth. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. and I plan on getting around to addressing that at, at, in the middle of this conversation. I just I just literally told him that. Like, yeah. Another, that and, I, another... and I will make and I, and I will pin that as well, because I have I have I have one little small thing to add on that something I saw this week. There is a couple things I saw this week that are tripping me out about that. And I didn't want to like so I didn't want to do this too much at that point in the conversation, but that's something that definitely needs to get talked about. We mm -hmm. gonna unpack all that because- yep. <laughs> we are, we are. You know, it's, it's one thing to be like, hey, you know, white folks, get your shit together. 
y'all y'all need to unpack and do some reflecting and da 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 da. da but also within our own uh, community, mm-hmm. a lot we need to unpack some of shit. unpacking that needs to happen. We need to unpack some shit. This is a great time to take a fucking step back. Yeah. And, and do some unpacking and reflecting on own shit that's going on here. All right. Okay, y'all. This is great. This is this is what I wanted. This is <laughs> so I had a bunch of questions, some from my what I ask everybody or whatever, but I think my first question for anyone, floor is open. How are you doing? How are you doing right now? This is just a check-in question. How are you feeling? How are you dealing with those feelings? If you even want to go into those details, just straight up, how, mm-hmm. how are you? You know, I'll start, I'll, let me let me sign okay. up. Somebody asked us a question on the FB Live too. So I'm going okay, to- I'll, I'll go get it. When it's time for that. Um, I, am i don't know where i'm at i'll be really honest uh, this year has on top of all of the other things you ladies know and a few people in here know because i've mentioned it before um i've had some really good highs this year but like literally literally uh, right before quarantine started i lost my mother so my mental state was already jacked to begin with <laughs> you know what i mean I was kind of already in a weird spot before we went into quarantine. So, and it, you know, it's just been a very weird year all the way around, not understanding the, the everything that we've all shared. For what it's worth, I'm okay. You know, um, I, I leave it at okay. I am okay. I'm not going through major, I've been there before. Mm. I'm, I'm still dealing with issues but it's not as bad as it could be i have been given the tools to deal with this a lot better than i would have say if this happened five years ago you know or 10 years ago or where we didn't have you know ways to deal with these things um i don't know i feel like i'm trying to be as optimistic as possible i'm grateful not that I wasn't before, but I'm very grateful for the position that I'm in while this is happening. I still have my job. I work my day job. Um, you know, my work environment is super supportive, um, even though it's, you would think it wouldn't be, but yeah, it is. Um, I, I work for, um, so for, for people who don't know, I'm a federal government contractor. So my big boss is actually a appointee of a uh, you know, the, the tank tyrant that sits in the White House. <laughs> so, you know, you would think that, you know, I wouldn't have that issue, but it's okay, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm reading Maureen's comment when she says, yes, the definition of okay has definitely changed so much for me. Okay, mm-hmm. I woke up this morning, I'm stable. Everything's okay. Everybody I need to check in with is okay. Like the people around me are functioning and, and, and we can work through whatever there is to work through that day. I'm okay with that right now. I'm very okay with that right now. Yeah. And I'm lucky I've got a really good and supportive group of people around me and I'm able to, I've been centered enough to be able to give that energy back to other people who need it. Like talking to my daughter when she has, when she has questions about things, like she literally had a breakdown trying to argue so argue with one of her friends about the whole George Floyd thing. This is not, this is something relatively new for her. She's 15. So the last two or three times this has happened, she wasn't in a position to fully understand what was happening to her life. So I'm in a position to give that back to her so that she's not going over the edge with that, you know? I don't know. It's, it's just, it, these. I'm going to go with okay and leave it right there. We're just going to go with okay. I feel you. Yeah. Okay is a great answer, a great answer, like for now, because it's like, Mm -hmm. you can't, yeah, yeah. okay is just, it's the answer. And like Maureen said, it it changed, Mm -hmm. you know, okay back in, okay in 2019 was a different okay. (laughs) You know, okay in 2020 is like, bitch, I woke up, okay, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, it's, Bitch, I'm breathing. 
Bitch, I woke up. <laughs> yeah, I still got a job. Bitch, I still got. I'm still able to pay my bills. I got food in the refrigerator. My the cable still, still, still works. Alive. Right. My friends are still alive. How, that's that's the one. My friends are still alive. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. a poem itself too. It yeah. is. Okay. Very much so. Okay. How okay has transitioned? Mm -hmm. How it has changed? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Who's next? How are y'all feeling, Sherry? Okay, I'll answer the question knowing that um, I'm gonna be thankful for social distancing because the first part of this since part of what I'm about to say will probably get me um, hurt and somebody trying to beat me up. So, because, but my friends know me and love me well enough to know that I have a tendency to keep stuff to myself in general. Because besides everything that has been going on this year. I'll answer the question knowing that uh, I'll be thankful I don't know where that came from. That was me. All right, it was Facebook. It's, 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 it's Facebook Echo. Okay. okay. Um, so besides everything else that's been going on this year, know that I'm just gonna mute. <laughs> part of what's been going on at, at, with everything that's been going on this year, um, my uh, stepfather who based who raised me um, has been dealing with has been advancing dementia over the past like three or four years. So we've been dealing with that. And over the past week, um, my mother just got out of the hospital on Wednesday um, due to a, uh, she had a transplant a couple of years, about 15 years ago. And she had a comp, she's starting to have complications. And so she had to go into the hospital last week because of the complications and she just got out on Wednesday. So, um, and my friends, know me well enough to know that I keep everything in until it's until I explode or until I know that everything is okay or until I, until I know until I know that I can like soften the blow for them I'll keep it to myself because that's just who I am so I've been dealing with that and I want to say I woke up one day last week oh the day that the riots started I live in Washington DC in Washington DC proper and um, Monday or Tuesday night of that week, I'm hearing helicopters flying around the neighborhood in the middle of the night. Oh my God, yes. Right. And so I did not sleep very well. My mother's run into the hospital. I'm trying to like, you know, I'm trying to figure everything out, you know, and place everything in my head. And I've got to work my day job. I'm in my apartment by myself because I live alone, and, which is not a bad thing all the time. But, you know, in that moment, living alone, not the best look. I would like to have had somebody else to depend on mm -hmm. to, like, make sure I do whatever. And um, I ended up calling my employee assistance program, like, I need a counselor now. Like, I really need to talk to somebody because I think I had finally reached the end of my rope. Like, I, 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 I'm at, I finally hit the point of, okay, this shit's too much. Mm. I finally hit too much. I'm better this week, but I had definitely hit too much. Yeah. FYI, I don't know if we got people in here from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but if anybody lives in Maryland, because I brought this up earlier because you said I needed outreach and I was talking about my therapist earlier. If mm -hmm. you live in the state of Maryland, and I think they also work in DC and they may work in Virginia as well, there mm -hmm. is a service that will give you free, yeah. FYI, like I legit just go with them sign up work with them they they do this for free yeah mm -hmm. feel like you're kind of hit that spot and i'll put i can actually put that in there as a resource if anybody wants it you know yeah, yeah. I'll drop that in there just look them up yes. and drop that in there please. For free yeah. no, don't worry about insurance and if it's if it's not free it's sliding scale but i literally have not had to touch my insurance on this for three years yeah and that gives me an idea i would love as just as creative as artists like we, there should be like a, a Google Drive of just shared resources. Yeah. Shared. That's a great idea. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I think it should be. I think there should be like mental health. Like, and like what you're saying right now, Danielle, mm -hmm. like for artists who don't have, especially artists right now who don't have a job, mm -hmm. who need free access and don't have, don't are not being pointed in the right direction. We need to have some type of some some log catalog of di these different resources just so everyone can be able to go into them add to them take from it whatever the fuck they want to do with it if this needs to live that needs to happen that, that's that's on my to-do list like legit 
Yeah. And so, but if you are among the, the blessed and fortunate to still be employed, check with your employee benefits. Cause that was the first people I went to. Um, cause I went to the employee assistance program because they offer so many counseling sessions over the phone and I was able to decompress and at least try to get some coping mechanisms to deal with it all. And even my counselor was like, this is the call I have been taking for weeks because of everything that's going on from everybody. He's like, this is just the call. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, also check with your insurance company to see if they will cover um, tele telephone or virtual virtual therapy. Uh, virtual appointments. Virtual Mine right now. Um, she was doing these before uh, COVID. There's a system they have that will, that's an, it's an encrypted system where you can do virtual mm -hmm. appointments. They will do that. Mm -hmm. um, we have used encrypted uh, like Zoom type meetings and that sort of stuff. So that stuff is available. Um, I did put the link for it, I found it. I put the link in there. Like I said, if you're in the general DMV area, mm -hmm. you can call them, get in touch with them. It takes about a week to set something up, but yeah. They're they're phenomenal. I will recommend this to anybody who needs to to you know get it. Like I said, it's either free or sliding scale. Don't touch it. Have to put something out, but yeah, they're they're phenomenal. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Kaniki, what's the question? How you doing? Um, the um, I am old. Dot dot dot. Came. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let me say that I, uh, what has changed is not a lot. Well, mean, meaning that, you know, while everybody was at home, I, I'm, I'm an essential worker. So I've, I've not been at home. I've been working every day. So my routine of things as far as like still going to work, whatever, that has not changed. So that, that didn't, um, affect me. I have been trying to like not just how am I doing, like what am I doing, right? Mm -hmm. So what am I doing to get to okay, right? So I do a lot of journaling. Um, I have um, I have a few friends who have had um, COVID-19. I, um, my cousin just lost her mother, which is so weird when I say that, cause she's not my aunt, but she's my cousin, which is a whole nother story. Um, she just lost her mother to um, the coronavirus. Mm. Um, I had an uncle that just died um, on 13th side mm. and it's, it's kind of like um, a grieving situation where there's no closure like how you're not able to honor the person with what I think that they would deserve as a memorial to them like and then you you just gotta just be like okay bye because you know, so that the grieving part is, is, is a little tough. Um, I've been definitely doing a lot of journaling and, um, you know, it's very, it's heavy on me, you know, definitely being poet laureate because I am such an inspirational person. I like to leave people, like the poetry that I like to write is I like to leave people better. I like you, you to feel better than you did when you came, right? So I'm not gonna be the poet that's talking about the sad stuff most of the time. So, and, and then when you're surrounded with so much sad stuff and the sad stuff is your inspiration, that's not inspiring. Yeah. So with that, it's not an okay kind of feeling. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, but um, today's my anniversary. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Yeah, we um, have two days of anniversary. And um, so we're, we had a tough 2019 and then I thought 2020, 2020, let me just give, give 2020 a little bit of props. It started off good. You know how kind of like a bad relationship start? Like you, th I thought you was okay. You know, you took me out and you gave me some snow on my birthday and everything mm -hmm. was good. And then I found out that you was a creep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. I thought she was okay. Facts though, 2020, it started off it started strong. Good. Like, it did was, start off strong. Like, it was, I was like, damn, like this is my year. And then it just went, mm -hmm. yeah. like 
no breaks. Just I was new year, new know. decade, and the hits just keep and on was coming. Like, and see. <laughs> Let's just bitch slap everybody right now. And yeah. see. Yep. And then shit on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, but I have, you know, some good friends checking on me. And let me just also say that I'm in a weird kind of space. And weird kind of space meaning um, you know, I, I did an interview with Queen Sheba. She interviewed me and she asked me, can white people this is part this is part of my okay question, right? And mm-hmm. the reason is because uh I'll give an example. My friend Shay texted me. I'm very close to Shay. Shay texted me and said, you know, and I don't remember what she said, but she was like, you know, something that I feel that that I'm I'm not going, I'm not doing okay or some something, right? I don't even remember. But I knew exactly what she meant by it, right? I knew what she was talking about. She didn't have to explain why she felt the way she felt. Then my friend Wendy, who's white, texted me and was like, How are you doing? How are you and 13 doing? Are y'all okay? And then she's like, I'm like, we're okay. And then she's like, I'm heartbroken. And I'm like, why? What happened? It didn't even dawn on me because she texted me back and said, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. it didn't even dawn on me that it was affecting her the same way that it was affecting me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a weird kind of space to be in because then you have these white friends. Like I was going to say that Queen Sheba asked me, what can white people do to help? I said, no, she said, can they do something? I said, yes. She said, what? I said, I don't know. Mm. Um, that's mm. a, yeah, that's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting space to be in. Mm. Like what can they, what can great. they. That's a great way to segue. Like that's so true right now. I feel like. A couple things. Working with, I work with all white folks. So mm-hmm. right now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the token black girl. It's like, you, the white guilt is in every meeting. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you, you see on everyone's face. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, what, what do we do, Charity? What, what, what do we say? Like, how, how do we move forward? It's, and it's just kind of like, and, it, and it's, it goes to Danielle's poem of constantly feeling like you got to explain. You got to, you have to educate. And I don't feel like fucking educating. And that's okay. Don't you don't have like to do it. that. I don't. And I, and I, at first I was all on, at first, like, as it was happening, I didn't realize what was happening. But then, like, I realized and I was like, yo, like, this is not my job. I'm already clocked in to do what I'm paid to do. Now y'all want me to educate y'all. No. Yeah. No. I, I'm somewhat lucky. I'm somewhat lucky somewhat in that the people I directly work with, it's a small, it's a small team. Um, but for the most part, minus, you know, big, big boss. Um, but my immediate, my, my other bosses, my, my, my coworkers, everyone else, they're pretty, they're in a place where they kind of know what's happening, are very world aware know not to step in certain areas um, mm-hmm. to ask me things that they know that are going to kind of trigger some some things with me. Um, they know not to do that to my coworker. They will check in and ask us if we are okay. There's only two of us. There's two black women that work in my, my section. They'll check up on us. They'll ask us if we're doing okay. They will open the door for us to talk about stuff and make space for us if we need to do that we don't have to give them the whole full education of things because they're smart enough to actually research on their own. They, they know where to look for things. Lucky you, Danielle. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that's one of the, and that is one of the blessings that I have been given this year. However, I have people in my family <laughs> that have to turn around <laughs> and be like, I'm not going to explain things to you. Yeah. Okay, so my family's very, okay, let me back up a step. My family's very um, diverse in that uh, part of my family is black, part of my family is white, part of my family is, poly- they're Polynesian Hawaiian, so we don't, we all look alike in the face, but we don't look like in any, any, anywhere else. It's like really weird. Um, but parts of my family and the people they chose to associate with, 
do not understand kind of what's happening. So me having, I keep wanting to throw things at them like, hey, yo, you do realize you have black cousins. You have, you know, you have full black cousins. You have full black family. And your stance on this is not negotiable. You know, like it, it's really not. Yeah. But it's also not my job to carry the emotional labor of having to tell you this. Exactly. But you know, it, oh. it like saying having that question right because again like now i have you know i i do have white friends whereas before i just had white associates so this is a different situation mm -hmm. and and how i build a platform on wanting to be, be in a diverse um i, I build a, a a women's group a writer's women's group that i wanted to be diverse right mm -hmm. and now having that has also afforded me the opportunity to have friends of different um, races and ethnicities and all of this right mm -hmm. so but it's still it's it's a it's a a situation to where uh, I feel like we do need when when somebody comes to us and they ask us the question like how can I help? I think that we need an answer for that. We need an answer for that because you know how you can help. Listen, we, 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 do we your will. own research. That's how you help. Do but listen, this, I'll give you some starting points, and that's it. You're that, saying and, wait, and, wait wait wait. Right. You're saying do your own research. Isn't asking us part of that research? Why would yes. you ask, why would you ask a person if somebody if if I if um mm -hmm. let me say if, if I was buying a house right mm -hmm. and I, I bought a house and y'all already knew I went through the housing situation why go on the internet when you come to me and say Kaniki where did you get your loan from what realtor did you use what you know whatever because we've been through it when we have we have but, but it's but you're not going to be able to understand. You're not going to be able to understand the answers I give you until you have a starting place. I'll give you a starting place. Start with this book. Start with this. Start with this. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're giving some information and do that research first. Yeah. See what lead you. Then come back and ask me that question again when All you right. have contact. I think the difference is it's like it's one thing to ask and have like an open space to have dialogue, right? And then there's a difference in I'm I'm not I want you to give me the full rundown of all the history, all of what happened. I want you to like literally give me the, the starter kit for how to be a white ally, a white ally right now. And, and we're not a monolith. We're not all, we're not gonna give the same answer. We're not black people are not a monolith. Stop exactly. It. Say you know, it's the the room, the question. We're not a fucking monolith. Yes. And I've had I've had very, very intense conversations with my supervisor with um, different coworkers lately. And I, I am open to people coming to the table and also bringing conversation to the- mm -hmm. Who else I heard? Who else I heard? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I, I'm okay with that. If you're coming to the conversation, you're like, hey, you know what? I don't really quite understand this or um, can we can we have a conversation? This is, and and I have like and we're open up in a safe space to have this conversation. I'm okay with that. Like, let's have dialogue. Let's let's dig deeper. But I'm I'm not going to like give you check a the book out in the library. The Bring it to your house. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to tell you who Martin Luther King was. I'm not like these. It's it's very. And I think that's another thing that's really shocking to me is that some people really just don't know these things. They don't know about, they don't really know about slavery. I think it was skim past in, in like it was for all of us growing up in school. And it was just like, oh yeah, this happened right now, next. Like, no, this is like deeply rooted shit that is still impacting us in our community today. Mm -hmm. But it's not just one chapter unit in history. Like this is something that needs, that should be an ongoing thing. But mm -hmm. it's so shocking to me now, just, just, just the questions that I've been getting. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Wait a minute, I think I have the answer. You, oh. know how, you know the answer to how can I help? What? Aside from research, the answer to how can you help stop killing us, even though I know you're not probably doing it personally if you're asking me the question. Mm -hmm. Also talk to your family members, tell them to stop doing the same thing. Tell Wait, them mm -hmm. don't just keep coming back to me like I'm the fountain and the source and being of all things. Talk to them, talk mm -hmm. to your family, talk to your friends. Tell them when we're not present in the room, where you stand on that. exactly that is how you tell them the same things i tell you that's a good answer that's, that's a very good answer because and that's the one that i have been using 
because work-wise, my work day, my, my office life, thank God I work for an HBCU. Because uh, I'm now, I'm going to tell you, interesting. <laughs> look, I work for an HBCU. My people, my, my employers get it. <laughs> so, okay. You don't even got to explain. It's just like, <laughs> explain we here, you here, we all here. Only reason, the only reason I wish that I was at work and that work was work like regularly is only because I would like to see these students being lit and just pissed off right now. I would just really be, I just want to see that energy from the students on campus. But that's another story. But where I have been getting it from, um, I don't even know that I talk about this. And Danielle and uh, Kaniki will testify. I know analysis knows. I was raised in a um, very white neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I was one of three kids, one of three black kids in my elementary um, in my elementary school classes. Um, and uh, and it pretty much stayed that way. Once we got once we left elementary school and I went to middle school, everything came a little bit more diverse because I went to middle school on um, a military base. That's another story for another day. It was a zoning thing, not that my parents were in the military. Interesting. It was just where the schools were zoned. But so, you know, through third through sixth grade, it was just me and a bunch of white people. Um, a lot of them on my government name Facebook page, I am still, I am connected with because we graduated, we went all through high school together. And I've had a couple of them this week after all of the shit that's been happening. This week, these motherfuckers, let me not cuss, they are in my inbox. I'm like, huh? Okay. (laughs) I had one a couple of years ago ask me about my experience, and that was his question, about my experience of going to school at that school because of how racially undiverse it was. Because he knew, you know, he's a white guy. He's like, he knew that this that I was, you know, not that I was different, but he's like that my experience was different coming through and he asked me about it. And he made a post and I told him, I said, you know what? I said, I appreciate you asking me that question. I'm like, in 50 years, nobody has asked me about that. Mm. And about every, you know, my experiences of coming through, how the black teacher, how the black teacher treated me worse than some of the white teachers did. Mm. It was crazy. Mm. Yeah. Um. And after that post, I'm like, and if you have someone that you can trust and you feel that you can ask questions to, go ahead and ask them. Another one of my people jumped into my inbox, sharing a video with me about black on black crime. And the only thing I could say is the mafia is as much of a gang as the Bloods and the Crips. They just don't make Oscar winning movies about it. And at that point, I was like, leave me alone. (laughs) I saw that, I saw that post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mafia is just as much of a gang as the Bloods, the Cricks, and the MS-13. Yep. <laughs> Facts. Politicians are gangs. I mean, we can go into it. Like, it, get, it, gets, it gets deeper, but it just depends on... Oh, and the one thing I did for them one day last week on my government name page is I wrote that post about the mafia. I wrote a second post, if you don't understand what Black Lives Matter is about and why it's not about Black on Black crime, I gave them a list of cases of the Black li- the major Black Lives Matter cases, Eric Gardner, uh, Philando Castile, uh, I just came off of it, uh, Sandra Bland, and um, I gave them about like six or seven cases of where Black people were killed by cops. And then I gave them seven white murderers. And I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. I said, I want everybody to please read the difference. I said, what these, all of these people have in common, I said, is that they had contact with police. Mm. I said, and what I want you to do, I said, is read about what happened in both sets of cases. And I specifically said, and I specifically kept it to police cases. Um, I said, and read what the person was accused of doing and what the penalty would have been had the case been adjudicated properly mm-hmm. compared to what has happened with all of these seven white boys that all went to jail. 
that are all sitting in jail after murdering people. Mm. We are not, these are not the same. I said, this is a thing. And then I went into the next post, I wrote something about, um, about the Ahmaud Arbery case and um, a couple of other cases where I was like, those cases were racism. Get back to me. <laughs> I said, now we can talk. Oh, and then I ended it with a thing about sex in the city. There is a scene in one of the, se it's one of the later seasons where um, uh, Carrie Bradshaw, Sarah Jessica Parker's character, at the end of the show, she is smoking a joint with Samantha on the side of the street and the police come up to her and they take her into custody for smoking a joint on the street, which is against the law. And she is put in the police car and they're gonna take her downtown. Um, Miranda, who is her lawyer and everybody's like, oh, officer, is there anything you can really do? She's been having a bad day. Her boyfriend broke up with her on a post-it note. Do you really have to arrest her? Do you really have to do this? You know, they did that and she ends up getting unarrested. You know, like they just end up giving her a ticket and not arresting her and taking her downtown. I wrote, my post was, if as a black woman, we'd have spent the night on Rikers Island. We'd have gone to Central Booking no matter how professional we are, no matter how much money we made, no matter whether or not our lawyer best friend was standing right there, all of us was going down the central book. Yeah. <laughs> it may not have come back. Mm -hmm. It may not have come back. Right. And the thing is when you explain this, and sometimes, sometimes it's like people get it, sometimes people won't, but it mm -hmm. feels like there's such a disconnect. It feels like, oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's you're just saying that because you're trying to gain sympathy or mm -hmm. it's, it's it's almost like mm -hmm. you're making this up but who would want to make that up right it's this belief of the black experience like we put ourselves here mm -hmm. it's always like it well if you go into your communities and you build everybody up and like it, yo if we could do that it would have been done it doesn't right. look like that. It's right. like almost it's such a disconnect in these conversations because I I try to I read the comments, I read the posts, I read everything, and I'm 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 really trying to be objective. You know what I'm saying? Like why where are you getting your thoughts? And it's so like people are really thinking from a, a space that just to me is so far off. And I I, I don't in in, in the way that they view our community is, mm -hmm. is so just despicable. It's like, y'all just lazy. Y'all could do better, da, da, da. Like, well, who, would want to be, who would want to be in this situation? It's like- you know what's nuts to me? How, how, that, that's what always killed me. When people decide they want to refer to us as lazy, but like, you do understand that the reason we're here in the first place is because y'all, we're you, fucking lazy. And you killed <laughs> three different. You, you, you literally killed off three different groups of people in the process of mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get this done. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's somehow we're lazy and we've gotten the lazy work. Like I don't understand this. Like mm -hmm. we are collectively some of the hardest working people. Yes, we are collectively. Black folks work their asses off. How many people, and it's, some of, sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's out of, I want more. Mm -hmm. it, it, it depends on the situation. A lot, I mean, we can, you know, we already know wage disparities and all that kind of stuff. We're not even gonna get into all of that. Right. But even if we didn't have to do that, I feel like we'd do it anyway. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Like and that. The ethic has always been there it's like it's insane oh and the funny part is with the whole black on black crime thing whatever it is everybody tries to make a thing out exist. it doesn't exist because it's crime inside your community, community. Yeah. i hate to tell why i, I hate you I, ever heard anybody say white on white crime they or don't Asian, say that. Asian crime or Asian Hispanic crime. on Hispanic crime. Like, I, I, don't want us to take, I want us to take that out of our vocabulary, period. Exactly. Because it's something that- uh, Because it's community crime. 
And do you know what? I hate to tell the white folks this. Y'all, it's a secret. Y'all is just as fucked up, if not more fucked up, yeah. in your own neighborhoods. But because I, I said this to a friend of mine the other day, the problem is, no, I said this on a post the other day. The problem is, is that the politicians need an easily identifiable enemy to say that that is the crime problem. Right. And the fact that we're black is easy. Yeah. And it it's the most know, visible the the first day, thing. It's we the don't visible, visible. most visible thing you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that yeah. What in order of in order of how you identify any of us on here, mm -hmm. the first thing you're gonna notice is I'm black. The second thing you're gonna notice is I'm female. In that order. Yep. In that order. Like it's back, so. Mm -hmm. So, all right, ladies. Woo! This conversation. Yeah. It was necessary. Right, though. Ladies, great. I'm gonna get I'm back to that Facebook question because I feel like it it jumps off of the back end of what we were just talking about. Go ahead. Um, somebody in the Facebook chat just asked if um, is it is uh, do you do we feel like there's an ep epidemic of PTSD in the black community from constant terrorization of police and racist that leads to actions like um, Sean Reed and Rayshard Brooks trying to evade cops? And if so, what do you think should happen or be put in place to help our, to help the community? It's kind of a deep question, but we, it's bouncing off of what we just talked about. Do I think there's PTSD? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I've had multiple encounters, and I'm sure we we either we all have or we know we, immediate people who had multiple ridiculous contacts with the cops, and um, you know after a while, it's like put your hand on the stove enough times you realize it kind of like burns your fingers. Don't do that anymore. So you try to avoid that like the plague, you know. That's true. We, yeah. I think if they really started show doing and showing how de-escalation, which for some reason the cops refused to do, even the one that happened last night, which I still haven't gotten all the details into, because the I'm Atlanta gonna say or a the one. one, the other one in Atlanta, the one the other night in Atlanta. Yeah. To, I've taken the, I've taken the weekend off from being black and traumatized. Me too. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, me too. Okay. The escalation, which for some reason the cops refused to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it needed to be said again. But, um, but we have, but we had, but um. Cause I, but yeah, I told, cause like I, Dave Chappelle came out with something this weekend and somebody has asked me like three times, have you watched it yet? Have you watched it yet? He asked me Friday and I said, no, I took the day off from being black and traumatized. I cannot watch. I can't, I couldn't do, I couldn't do it anymore. It's yeah, been, yeah. and when we've had this constant stream of because now that the George Floyd case is getting so much focus and what happened with George Floyd, there has been a constant stream of news and cases that needed to be reopened and, uh, or cases that are reopening, let me say it that way. And um, more information coming out and just stuff on top of stuff, on top of stuff, on top of stuff, I was like, yeah, I can't take my skin off, but I can choose not to engage with it today. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I've been, like, since Friday. I know come tomorrow, I'm going to have to read, I'm going to have to come back into it eventually. Yeah. It's yeah the same yeah. thing with the coronavirus. I'm like, I need to disengage from the coronavirus. What can I do to make myself feel better about the coronavirus? Like, or at least feel better about life and general, um, I'm gonna tell you what I did today to make myself. Feel <laughs> Go ahead. No, honestly, what I did today to make myself feel better. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have, have gained the, the COVID nineteen, like my weight is because I, I ain't been nowhere. <laughs> and I'm getting chunky. I'm like, what we not gonna do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sit around and you know, not, not dogging anybody, but I do not want to end up on my six hundred pound, you know, my six hundred pound life. We, not dogging anybody, but <laughs> but that's a good question. I, I, that's I, another I, good question. I can eat. I can do one of two things. 
I, had, I actually had a meme up about this before and I got to find it. It was like, there, there's two different, I got to find it. Like there's two types of self-care and one of them was like, hold on. My, my daughter, my daughter had me die laughing when I was talking about this. Um, it was like, there's two different types of self-care and one of them was like, you sit in the bath with the bath bomb. I want to make sure I get this right. Um, hold on a second. Cause I just, I just saw it. Do, 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 do. It's funny. Um, oh, there it is. There are two kinds of people when it comes to self-care. One, takes a bath with a face mask while drinking a matcha tea and lights a candle that smells like heaven. Or two, watches documentaries about people getting murdered and orders their body weight Mexican food. That Bro, would be I'm number two. <laughs> I'm that would be me. <laughs> 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 that's literally me i sit around and watch like you know marathons of snapped and because that's me i watch marathons of snapped and i order my body weight mexican food or in this yeah. I need food tonight but so but that's I so that's that's the question in general and I'm, i know this is charity's interview but that was a good question what are we doing for ourselves to try to self-care to try okay, to my next question Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was on your <laughs> we list. You, we didn't mean to take you. Take we didn't mean to take your interview. It, it not, that, you know, that actually was it. I mean, that was it. This is it. a that collective. This is a collective mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's we all we all vibing and bouncing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. I didn't okay. know it was on your list. But that what I did today. Question. That's mm -hmm. a great question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Daniel. Mm -hmm. What I did today, believe it or not, I got so lucky, guys. So I I, I I'm a gamer, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, exactly. I'm hey, gang, gang, gang! Things going on. So today I thought, like, well, let's solve it. Let's let's solve the the COVID nineteen weight problem with mm -hmm. a game. So I bought Just Dance twenty twenty. Turns out it was <laughs> on, turns out it was on sale for half price. Hell yeah! Mm -hmm. So I bought the dance game and spent two hours before we did this interview <laughs> dancing my behind off in my living room. You better dance two K twenty. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna use this once a day, every day, to just zone out, play a game, dance to some fun music, forget that there's other stuff going on. Fuck yeah. so, solve two problems at the same time. One, take myself out of the space where I'm thinking about stuff constantly. Do something that doesn't, to me, feel like exercise because I hate the gym, and <laughs> I really do. I, I'll be, I'll be honest about life. I have to do stuff that does not feel like exercise. I'm actually and, shocked that I missed the gym. I never thought I would say that. Ever I hate it. Life. I've never liked the gym, <laughs> but I have to do stuff that feel that does not feel to me like I'm working out. Dancing oh. to me doesn't feel like working out. It right. it gets me moving and things. And it you know, I used to be a dancer. So at some point in my life, you know, yeah, I used to be I used to be a dancer. Okay, little known secret that that, that like seriously, little known secret. Not only was I a dancer, but at one point I was my college mascot. Yay! <laughs> Nice. I went to Syracuse. That's what's up. Orange for a little while. So you can flip and don't tell and nobody. All that. Okay. Yeah, I was a giant orange. For a while. The whole but thing. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. All right. One of those. I told myself if I ever get on Jeopardy, I'm gonna tell them I was a giant orange at one point in my life. Yeah. Let me let me ask y'all a question. I know this is charity's interview, but let me let me ask y'all the question. Nick, y'all stop saying it's my interview. It, 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 it's it's your week. It's, it is. Hours. It's, it's your week. It's your week. It's your week. It's your week. Mm -hmm. Did y'all notice um, how the news changed and how people were like, you know, the the whole uh, coronavirus got swept under the work the rug, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about, then we moved on to talk about how, you know, Black Lives Matter, how, you know, whatever they're talking about on the news, right? Because I don't watch a lot of the news, but mm -hmm. I, I do listen to it a little bit in a car. But um, it's, it just makes you wonder. It's not that the coronavirus is not as serious anymore because coronavirus is very serious. In fact, I know right now I've known... I've known 10 people who ha have had the coronavirus, okay? Yeah. And I know five people who have the coronavirus right now, right? Mm. So, I mean, five people who are, that survived from the coronavirus, I, I actually known two people who didn't survive from the coronavirus, but I mean, it's still a serious thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like, if the news can change their mind, right? Can't mm -hmm. we change what, um, what we pay attention to go, going back to what um, Charity was talking about, because, you know, people want, if you're looking for me to be outside, I already said, I'm not coming outside to September and that's up for debate because I'm, I'm trying to live when this is over. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and I have um, underlining conditions and I know what it's like to not be able to breathe and I'm going to be in the house. Yeah. That's where I'm going to be, right? So, but it, it was just odd to me. It's like, oh, well, we're going to change the narrative and, and make everybody focus on this for a while. We're going to forget about the coronavirus because we're going to let everybody go outside and protest. And then we're going to talk about how the coronavirus has spiked, right? Yeah. Because everybody outside protests. Well, there's two things. Yeah. There's two answers here. One, um, either everybody was just so completely amazed that we were willing to risk getting Corona to walk outside <laughs> to go protest because y'all does, because, you know, folks decided they couldn't stop killing even in the middle of a pandemic or, you know, two, it's kind of like, uh, it's not, you, there's a twofold answer. The second half of it is, I don't know why people think you can't pay attention to more than one thing at the same time. It's like, I, I hate, like, <laughs> what, are we, what are we caring about this week? It's Damn, like, people cannot. All the things all the time. I care about all the things all the time. My problem is where am I, where am I focusing my energy today? Mm. I can care about all the things at all the time. Right. I care about coronavirus. Please believe I'm not walking out my house if I can mm. help it without, you know, all the things happening, the mask, mm. the, you know, the don't touch me, get away, stay six feet. I get paranoid, my anxiety be on 10,000, but like leave me. I but here's the thing though, even if we are protesting in a pandemic, and I'm about, I'm about to touch on something. My apology. I'm about to touch on, touch on it. I'm about to touch on it. Okay, we're protesting in the middle of a pandemic because Black Lives Matter and because police can't stop killing us. Like, y'all just can't leave us the fuck alone. Or, like, or even in that moment, there was no reason to be on that man's neck for nine minutes, no matter what the fuck he did. That no guy. matter what the fuck he was accused of doing. That, that didn't guy. need to happen. Now, but... Okay, no, we, all, we all saw it. Pandemic because Black Lives Matter and because, but we all saw it. What was it? Two weeks prior? Three weeks prior? There were some other folks out there protesting because they couldn't get their hair cut because they wanted to go to the gym because they wanted to not be in the house. They were protesting the stay at home orders. That's Those cool. people are With out there. Weapons. With weapons. With weapons and no masks. They were throwing government buildings at that. At government buildings. Right? At, at government buildings with weapons and no mask. We came out with, it's okay. We've come out in these streets with our signs, with our masks, with the people on the side of the street. I went down to Black Lives Matter Plaza. I was down there twice last week. There are people giving away hand sanitizer on the side in front of the White House by Lafayette Square. There are people making sure that you can eat and have food. Everybody's keeping their distance. Everybody's keeping safe. And we saying that this shit is fucked up and y'all wrong and y'all know it. And right. also when we started protesting, we started protesting really after the first wave of stay at home orders yeah. started being lifted. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, it's you're still risking your life to yeah. tell them to stop risking our lives. Like, right. No one realizes the irony of you're literally about to try to almost kill yourself to tell people to stop trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. right. It's that serious. And you're saying, yeah, but, but, and these are the same people that'd be standing out there that were standing in front of the buildings with the guns and the Confederate flag screaming all lives, that Escalso screaming all lives matter. I'm protesting for my life, you protesting about a haircut. Right, and, I have, and I've also, to flip a sentence, if you truly believed all lives matter, then me saying black lives matter would not bother you. It shouldn't even be, a, it shouldn't even be an issue, it shouldn't even be a question. Right, if that's truly what you believe. If you believe all lives matter, somebody had this as a meme, wear a mask when you walk in the store. Right, leave me alone. That it's part. Just, wear, wear a mask when you walk in the store if you believe all lives matter. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to media, the things that are so disturbing to me is that you have these different outlets and just kind of going back to what Kaniki was saying, mm -hmm. um, that can say the same thing, mm -hmm. but the way it's delivered and the way that it is perceived are bipolar opposites. Mm -hmm. Every time, like legit, the, the fact that 
we can watch a video of a black man get murdered, mm -hmm. unarmed, killed, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. around him telling him to stop, all different races around this officer, officers mm -hmm. telling them to stop. And for that to be reported on the news, and, and, and in one outlet, it's like, fuck this, this shit is wrong. And in another outlet, it's like, oh, well, he was a thug and he was this and this, that, and the other. And we're all watching the same video though. And mm -hmm. it's so crazy that the the bare the bare minimum doesn't seem to surpass everything else. It's, it seems that all the other narratives is what mm -hmm. is driving folks right now. It's it's not that a person, regardless of their skin color, mm -hmm. was that was killed. On, on, right in front like, of you. Taken right in front of you. It's, oh, well, he was high on methamphetamine. He was not a good person. Shout out to Candace Owens, her bitch ass. Like, you know. Can I ask who the women? I know this is the conversation. Right I have a question on about Facebook her. On Facebook Live, on Facebook Live, in this building, right now, in this room. Candace I, Owens does not speak for black people. Let she me does not, because I have a question. No, I have, I have no, such not. a question. She does not speak for black people. All you white folks retweeting her, reposting her, saying, well, look, well, this, look what she, she don't speak for us. She don't speak she really, for us. And my question <laughs> is, and my question is, I listen and I read, I will read pundits and news anchors I read a little bit of everybody because like, I'm always curious about what the other side is saying. I did some additional research this week. And yes, I'm about to do this takedown on another black woman and I apologize. My question to y'all, everybody, is why are they listening to the woman who hasn't even graduated college? Don't, 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 don't apologize. You're yeah. absolutely right. If like even even Tommy Laren, credentials are a thing. Credentials are a thing. Even Tommy Laren, who I think is just as much of an idiot, she graduated college. Why are you listening to this chick, this woman, person who hasn't even graduated college, who doesn't have a degree? If she had a full degree, and you know, I I still I don't know that I would still respect her any, but I like I would respect y'all following her maybe, but I like I can't. I can't with any of y'all and her, and her, and especially when her views are so stupid. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do you respect her views mm -hmm. knowing that at some point mm -hmm. she had a discrimination lawsuit? Yeah, and used the NAACP's money to get them to, 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 to do it. He was that being part, bullied. That she was bullied. That part. Oh, oh, right? Like, come on. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Sorry. She's so, no, this is great. This is great. Scamming the system. Yeah. And you're still listening to her. She's scamming yeah. the system and always has been. And she's whack as fuck. I'll she see is. Candace Owens. I hope you're probably not watching this, but you will someday watch this. Mm -hmm. You are whack as hell. You're whack as fuck. You don't represent me. You don't represent my sisters. You don't represent the black community. White Not folks stop posting her thinking that she speaks for the black delegation. We trying to trade her ass. Really quick. We're trying to Listen, trade I will trade her for a pack of new ports and two sticks of gum that have been stuck to the sidewalk in Baltimore City. Like she's- I They mean, can have y her ass. You ain't gotta give me nothing back. How about that? Yo, you, 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 you ain't gotta give her. me shit back. Here, take nah, that shit. Nah. Nah, for my trouble, I would take back a new forts and two sticks of gum that was stuck to the stuck to a Baltimore sidewalk. I, I don't even smoke, so that's I, I don't either. I, I quit. I don't even either. I mean, I don't I don't smoke either. Now, charity to act to charity to answer you to, to bring this back to the to to the lighter side, which we were talking about, self-care. I'ma tell you now, one, if you watch my Instagram feed at all, y'all know I've been over here baking every goddamn thing because no, I keep saying leave me something outside on the step and I'm going to come get I it. I think gardening. Oh, let's, let's talk about what people have been Did doing. Did you find out what that plant was? Can it be? No. I don't you know. know. <laughs> I don't you got to wait for it to bear some fruit if it's That's fruit. The, thing, fruit. The, 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 the bigger, the, like the majority of responses that I've been getting from planters mm -hmm. have been saying that they're 
it's like beets or potatoes, which are all things I have to just wait and see. See what happens. Fuck it. There's an app to identify stuff like that. And I, I have to remember what it is. It's 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 like my because my landlord, he he had like he get he came over with like a pack of like 50 different seeds, herbs and uh vegetables, all that good stuff. And I, like a dumbass, was just, oh, I like this and I like this, and just mixed all the seeds together, didn't even try to even label mm-hmm. shit and just started planting stuff in my arrow garden. And so now I have all these miscellaneous plants starting to grow. And I don't know what the fuck they are. I don't know what they are. And you're gonna have a mystery thing. salad. Shout out to <laughs> yo, legit. But what I love is that I posted this shit on Facebook. And the community is so, they are so, they're just as invested as me. Like they're looking <laughs> figure out what it is. They're reposting <laughs> it. They're like, help charity figure this out. <laughs> like it's, it's legit. A I saw, I, I'm, I'm literally talking to the screen when I, when you're on live, I'm talking to the screen. Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Alabama. I see things planted. I don't know. What, I was like, will she show it? I'm gonna know what it is. I was like, I don't, I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm saying to you, out loud, I don't know what that is. We're just gonna have to wait for it to go to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I it's have no a, idea. Question mark. But that's that's something I've been doing like for self-care is gardening. That thing's been so therapeutic. I love watching things grow. It's I'll just, see if I can find the app for you, Sherry. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be awesome? Let me use that as a metaphor for black people and, and black boys and women who are getting murdered here. Um, we don't know what these people would have been. Mm. Watch Yo, you. okay. I'm gonna need you. Oh. I'm gonna need you to stop coming up with writing prompts, Kenny. I've heard like three or four. Okay. This there's been a few. Crazy. Yeah, there's been I, like three or I, four, I, I, and they come right from my workshop. I'll be like, for the workshop, we got all. <laughs> well, work. yeah, use them for the workshop. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell y'all the last crazy thing of self care because this one hit me on Friday, but um, I'm not gonna say where I found them. But out there in the world of the internet, I have found some uh, episodes of what was my favorite soap opera. Which was? Mm-hmm. All My Children, mm-hmm. which has been off the air for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. But I found some old episodes and I was watching old episodes of All My Children last week. Yes. Because <laughs> it was just, and I know it was like, it's white privilege on display, but it was still just like, what is all my, what is that? It, it was a soap opera. Oh, it was a daytime God. drama. It was a soap opera. Shame in everyone's face right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, like I don't know. Oh, <laughs> oh. How old are you? Who, me? I'm 32. Yeah. It's I'm okay. Old. Yikes, okay. Soap opera daytime drama was not for everybody. I'm saying this is what I did. Oh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel yeah. like Young and the Wrestlers right now. I, yeah, I, and yeah. it was. I don't want, I, 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 my only one I ever watched was All My Children and it went off the air in like 2011. I um, used to watch Young and the Rest of All My Children when I was young. Oh, I did forget my other piece of self-care. I almost forgot. Sherry, my mm-hmm. was done. No, oh, no. So I can't wait to see it. I, would have to post I, a I, missed it. I missed it, Danielle. What's your other piece? Table. So this is this what I did. So I buy like furniture, right? Like, mm. And we have furniture. Like I, I fancy myself being on flea market, flea market flip at some point in my life. So <laughs> I bought this table. The table was I didn't pay this much for it. I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for because it it's great. So I bought this table, and the table was originally like 150, 160 dollar hotel table mm-hmm. from Restore. Yay for me! I, I love Restore. Was for it. <laughs> <laughs> How much you pay for it? I paid nine dollars for this hundred fifty dollars table. I love like, restore. Craft supplies into it and put a giant geode on that joint and then covered it up so it's now dry and about to come in the house tomorrow. Okay. Nice. That's, That's good. Dope. That's dope. I have pictures of it on my um on my IG page. If you got, it should be like the next to the last thing or the like the within the last few two or three posts I put up. Like you'll see like a progress shots of all of the table. Nice. And I have some home improvement projects that are gonna be going on around here that I have been, they're not quarantine projects. It's stuff that I've been planning to do, Mm -hmm. but I needed to get um, one more piece of furniture. And uh, Danielle and you gotta come over Charity and I I would do my, Oh, I'm in the cool club. Okay. Come, oh, shoot, you can, we'll, we'll talk. 
Um, <laughs> you gotta come over because um, I will go around the house and you will see. I will point out all my thrifting finds, and yeah. um, I need to Sherry, make. Sherry's good for that. Sherry's I'm good for that. that. I'm real I good for that. Learned, I have I have learned from the Jedi Master. <laughs> And this new and this piece that I just pulled in this weekend, um, I can't even. Ex basically, I have these two bookshelves that I got last year for twenty two dollars. That are five feet tall. That are six feet tall bookshelves. Mm. That I got for the pair for twenty two dollars. I found an entertainment unit on Facebook Marketplace this weekend which when I paint all three pieces the same color, they will look like all one big piece. They look like they always belong together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my TV on that and then the piece that my TV is sitting on, I'm gonna put somewhere else in my apartment. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but I have been waiting to find that piece. And now okay. that I have it, I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. I want to see when we're able to do so, and I gotta have you guys up here too, because I told you I just moved like like two weeks. Well, yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah. So we're almost done unpacking and getting the the new spot together. So, yay! There's congrats. Like, I now have a functional office. <laughs> hey. Nice. That's amazing. That's really good. I, um... I have a functional office with a Wonder Woman in the background. Nice. I um um am well. I just finished um, submitting a chapter to a book that uh, one of my friends, Laurie DeFranco, is doing about. Um, hold on, let me, let me find out the right name. Hold on, <laughs> volume two. I was reading the book. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Self Healing Techniques. Right. Mm. So she's doing a, a volume two. The, the book, the volume one, is really good, and so I'm gonna be in the volume two. Mm -hmm. so she asked, you know, she she uh, she inboxed me and was like, hey, do you want to be a part of this? You know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sure. Now, you know, I got a gazillion things to write and do, right? And I'm like, yeah, I didn't know it was going to happen so quickly. But anyway, um, she texted me and said, I need the name of your chapter. Like, what are you going to write about? And I'm like, Psh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. So at this point, when I, I get up, I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the text. So I look in my room and there is a basket in front of my bed. Well, like catacorn to my bed, right? There is the, where's the window and the, uh, my full leak mirror. So I'm looking at a basket of clothes overflowing, which is all of the clothes that I've had on all week, just overflowing, right? I look around in my room at all of this clutter. So I say, I'm going to write about decluttering. Okay. Mm. Decluttering your mind, decluttering mm. your space. So yeah. that you can be creative, creative. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what my yeah. chapter is about. And that, you know, has inspired me to declutter because you're never going to know how much space you actually have. Because, you know, my, my grandmother always said everything in your house should have a space and a place, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. you keep certain things in a certain place. Everything should have a place and it doesn't have a place, then you don't need it, right? You need right. to get rid of some of that stuff, right? right? So she was like, if you buy underwear, you need to be throwing away underwear. You know what I'm saying? You should have like, I have 30 pairs of this underwear and that's it all the time. That's all you need. So she was like, you have to have a place. So the things in your house should be something that you use, something that you look at that's beautiful, right? And it has to have a purpose. Even if it's sentimental value, it has to have a purpose with your sentimental value, right? And it needs a place. So I'm like, that is what I am working on for my self healing right now is getting rid of all of the things that's cluttering my mind, that's Come cluttering on. my space. Even if it's under something, in something, it's still clutter. Even if I'm not, you know, totally looking at it, I know that I have this clutter closet. You know? <laughs> oh, um, well, I, wait a minute, one second, real quick. I want to, I want to take a point because there's something I wanted to mention that I forgot about. Now that C. Thomas and Danielle is here. Um, I visited uh, Black Lives Matter Square, Black Lives Matter Plaza this week, and um, twice. I went on Monday when all of the art was on the fence, when like all of the art was on the fence. I have an amazing set of photos that I need to curate through, um, and all the art was on the fence. Um, I went again the next day. I went on Monday, then I went again on Tuesday. Um, for another purpose. 
and all the art had been taken down because the, no, I went on Wednesday. So I went on Tuesday and Wednesday um, because the uh, Smithsonian has come through to collect all of the right. art and to document all of the protest signs that were up. So if you see the pictures from there, there was a big like Black Lives Matter flag that covered the space in front of the White House, like front and center. Mm -hmm. right. When I was there on Wednesday, in that space were pictures of just all the Black women and all the Black trans women that have been killed. Oh, wow. Through police action. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this either, um, but I want to say it was Atlanta that did it. They equally painted, it was, I want to say it was Atlanta. My brain says either Atlanta or Philly, but I want to say it's Atlanta. Um, they also did the thing where they they painted all Black, all, uh, Black Lives Matter on the, sh the street. Mm -hmm. They actually wrote all Black Lives Matter instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of Black Lives Matter and changed the, changed the color, except for the word Black, which is in the standard yellow that they've been using for the street road signs. Mm -hmm. um, they changed the rest of it so that it's in the color of all the pride flags. Oh, nice. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah, they, they changed it so everything, like a city like that, and I, I lived there at some point in my life, um, and in a lot of other places need to do it too, especially now we're in the middle of pride month. So. Yeah. Right, right. That's something that we also didn't um we didn't talk about. I think like with everything that is happening right now, we just totally miss Pride Month. Like it's, I it's did a couple of Pride Month events like very early on in in the month. Um, mm -hmm. uh, late May, Black Pride uh, was end of Mar end of May, beginning of June. Um, it's usually like Memorial Day weekend, so I did some events, uh, some virtual events uh, mm -hmm. that um, I've done some since then. Or I try to bring it up as much as possible um, mm -hmm. when I do events where you know where that's mm -hmm. where that's available to me to do so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's 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 different because we don't get to do the things we normally would do. We can't go out and celebrate. We can't do the events. We can't, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I miss, I miss advocate. everything. We can't advocate in real life. I mean, we can, but it's it's much harder to do so. Oh, I'm sorry, but we still got pride though. We still got pride. We do, we do. Speaking of it's so funny, I meant to say when, 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 uh, <laughs> when Danielle was saying she's a gamer, I thought she said, I'm a gamer. I was like, what the hell is a gamer? <laughs> <laughs> and the funnier part is the the, the the funnier part is Cherry was the next one to go gamer. No. But no, no, what's funnier is that in the comments, a couple of people have asked me what the hell was all my children, which was funny. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't even know what what all what all my children is, yo. It was like, just funny. It's it's it's, it's, just, it's, no, so it's funny. It's, it's funny. funny. It was just funny. It was just funny to me. I'm gonna figure it no, out. No, no. Gamer. I, up until up until I just downloaded the thing today, just because I felt like dancing, I felt like that was a good thing to do. I have been. I've that had was a great thing in, to do. Uh, I've had my head buried in a uh, Mortal Kombat 11 aftermath and um, mm -hmm. an older game that's actually I started because of quarantine called Fallout Shelter, which is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It's literally people living in a Fallout Shelter. It's like The Sims on steroids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Keeping them alive. Oh, y'all tell us like y'all uh, in the comments, like y'all tell us what have what have y'all been doing? doing? Don't care. Yeah, like, like can we get? Yeah, we got a few people on here, Facebook, on uh, in here in the Zoom and the live Zoom. What are y'all doing? Tell for us what are you, what are you to make yourselves feel better and to do things. Yeah, I think that it's important right now. I think that like upholding Black joy in this moment is something that our ancestors have always done. Mm-hmm like going through the most trial, tribulation situations that you can think of our ancestors, everybody before us, everybody even to now have always found some type of joy to be able to get through this shit. So I'm just curious, what are y'all doing to get your mind off things? 
guys. I, I said puzzle. Yeah. What kind of puzzles? Like um, the puzzle pieces puzzle or like uh, written puzzles? She's right. doing a 2,000 piece puzzle, puzzle right piece. now. Oh, 2,000? That's serious right there. I, I can never figure out how to put them things together. I'd be so confused. Who's read? What are we reading? What are we? What are we watching? What are we? Uh, how are we? Are we exercising? Are we? Yeah, because my, my my Fitbit walks are doing a thing. Um, Tiana said she's writing poetry as self care. Poetry is her therapy. It's basically her therapy journal. Nice. I haven't written. I haven't written well, I take that back. It's a lie. I was gonna say I haven't written anything, but it's a lie. I haven't written much since going to quarantine. And I want to know one question. As I've mentioned previously in this conversation, I live in Washington, D.C. proper. Today is June 14th. Why are there fireworks and why have they been going off for two weeks? You know, well, I mean, you know same thing here. I'm like, <laughs> did y'all did they take the stimulus money and just buy out all the fireworks? Like what's happening? I thought that wasn't allowed in DC. I didn't I thought that was like they're not. They go somewhere else to get them. And they have been going off for two weeks. Yeah. They've been going off here for like the last week or two. Here. I thought it was just me. So <laughs> traumatizing. Man, it's, it is. It's like right now it's not the time, y'all, for fireworks. What? I'm like, what are y'all no. celebrating? Like, I don't know if y'all, I don't know if we're rioting or we're celebrating. I can't figure out which one. Stop messing with my emotions. Oh, it's, it's, All right. It's, so it's, Anne Marie joined Girl Trek to focus on their badass women. I like that. Nice, nice, nice. I love it. Yeah, I think like, you know. Somebody said Juneteenth came early. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. And Trump, Trump, sure enough, moved his damn uh, rally. He, he did. Listen, I'm, listen, I'm like, this listen, is not a good right? idea, sir. Listen, like, you can't play with you can't play with the fireworks in Baltimore City because listen, I have a poem about this or, and a haiku, and it's like basically it it's like gunshots or fireworks. We don't know which one it is, and we ain't trying to play America's favorite game. We really not not today, not this week. And FYI, I wrote that because of thirteen. I had a conversation with thirteen where I said it. He said, "Write the poem," and so I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. So I think that um, I watched the Dave Chappelle. You did? So mm-hmm. I watched it I three watched times. It I watched it three times. I haven't watched it yet. It was um, I would definitely say like be mentally prepared because he does go through a lot of things that might uh, trigger trauma. Mm -hmm. But one thing that he says that that for me, I think any artist can kind of relate to. He says that people expected him to show up. Mm And I think even Kaneki said something about it earlier. Like, well, why aren't you writing about this? Why aren't you to- doing this? Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. And I think with him as a comedian, because he, he's very prone to speaking on these type of topics. Like Dave Chappelle got no cut cards, right? Mm-hmm. But people, I think, I guess, from what he was saying, were extremely disappointed because he just wasn't as vocal as he should have been. And I think that it also relates to this this question that I love about uh, from Jim Carrey um, about being transparent, being um, showing up who you are, showing up as who you are Mm -hmm. as an artist. And even now, I think that question is even more important, showing up as who you are as an artist during a time where shit, where things are just um, super overwhelming and also but also very relative to your life. How do you show up? What, how should you show up? Is it your obligation to show up because you are an artist? Do you owe that to the people? That's um, a good question. At what point, what, what, so the question is at some point when you create yourself, you're going to have to either let that creation go or take a chance of being loved or hated for those who, who you, or hated for who you really are. Are you going to, uh, you're either going to have to kill who you really are and fall into your grave grasping for the character you never wore. Some artists will say that their art is a true reflection of themselves. How important is it for artists to be transparent in their audience, to their audience? But even more so, how important do you think it is during times like this for artists to show up, to speak out, 
and to write, to take pictures, to paint, whatever that outlet is, how important do you think it is right now? I'll even kind of lead with, I saw a post from someone saying that right now we are writing history, mm -hmm. right? We're writing history, we're painting history, we're archiving history because like you said, Sherry earlier, you know, our, which, the people out there on the grounds, the artists, the people out there archiving all these things are getting the real mm -hmm. story. Right. You know what I'm saying? The people who went to Vietnam, taking the pictures, was getting the real story. So how important or how obligated are we as artists to get out there and get the real story? Do we owe that to the folks? Should we be writing even if we don't feel like it? Because I know some days I'm just like, fuck it. I don't feel like advocating today. I don't mm -hmm. feel like doing shit today. I just want to like not do anything, whatever. But there's also something in the back of my mind that's like, I need to be on. I have to be here. There's something that there's some there's some type of obligation in the work that I'm doing that makes me feel that I gotta do this shit. So I open that floor and, and we'll close on that question. I think, well, see, here's the thing. The reason that we know so much about what is going on or what went on, I'm going to say, 100 years ago is not because of what people, they're getting their information from what the people were writing and journaling, the letters that they were writing at the time it was going on. That's the context that the historians work from. I say this as someone who studies history. Cause I would say as a historian, yeah. <laughs> as a historian, that's what we are studying. Like, so when we go back, so when they're gonna, when I go to research a topic for a paper about something in history, I'm gonna look for the newspaper articles. I'm gonna go look for letters that may have been going back and forth between people. I'm gonna look for somebody's journal because that's gonna give the best information about what's been going on at that time. So do we owe it to the rest of the world right now, to the people living right now to write down what's going on and to document what's going on? Hell no, y'all got eyes, y'all can see, write it down your damn selves. Mm. I think we owe it to two generations from now. And the joke that Shelly says so put up on her page when all when the quarantine started, at some point, all of us are gonna be grandparents and your grandchild is gonna get some sort of social studies project where they gotta interview grandma about this year. Mm. And mm. I was like, yeah, I guess I better start writing so that I can have it all together for whenever I have grandchildren. Damn. That and Woo. if you look at, I was going to actually touch on because I know Sherry is a his, historian. Um, that if you ever look, if you ever actually get into like really proper histories of things, uh, a lot of it's marked by poetry to begin yeah. with. Yeah, almost all of it. I mean, going back to like the Iliad, and the <laughs> we know what happened because those are poems, they're epic poems, but they're poems, right. You know, we know what this is with some context from somebody who was there and wrote about it in the most creative way possible. Do we owe it to people? I agree with you. Hell no. We don't owe it to anybody to do anything. Y'all see this. You figure it out. You have context. Figure it out. Do we owe it to ourselves? Probably. If, if we want to get it straight, because, you know, who says, who's to say my faculties would be all together in, you know, 20, 30, 50 years? I don't know. But you know, I can remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but tomorrow ask me and I can tell you, I don't know, I don't know what I ate yesterday. And but I'm not even trying, and even as I started. That, I'm, I'm not worried about if I owe that to anybody else. I owe that to myself, maybe, but that's about it. And even as I start to think about how to document all of this, I'm like, where do you even start? Right. Where do I, you even start? I capture it in any, in any and all names that I can. But you know, the last couple like said, Again, I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of 2020, from the eye as the eyes of a historian and putting this year in context what happened this year this is everything that happened this is what i was doing how did we get here 
Well, let me tell you how both political parties in the United States fucked up in 2018, 2008. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you how they messed up. 1776, years. actually. Let's get this right. You no, know? no, 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 no. I'm looking at like I'm looking at. Okay, my, the statement that's going to come out of my head is a political party historical context statement. Yeah, I know. Okay, and that's all. And that's the only. So that's why I'm just going to. This is a specific box I'm walking in. Up until the election of Barack Obama in 2008, every election before then, both parties would have groomed and set up somebody that they want to actually run for president. I'll say it that way. Something happened in 2016, specifically in 20, like 2012, it was still kind of together. Not really, because if they were together, the person that they ran would not have ran against Barack Obama in 2012. He would have ran in 2016. That is my statement on the Republican Party. Between those two elections, the parties stopped doing that. That is why you had 16 people running for the Republican nomination in 2016. That's why we had 16 people running on the Democratic side, 20 people running this year, because they hadn't quite solidified around who they really wanted to run. I now, got a joke, Kim. Huh? I said, I got a joke for that. Isn't that, is that some function of, you know, a weird, you know how he always says this is such a great economy. That person always says this is such a great economy. So you got 16 people running. For <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> for the last two, last two go around, you've had 16 people running for the same job. Right. So, so in that, I'm like, yeah, you got like, y'all are not properly grooming and setting up your candidates because there is no way logically that this person that is currently there should be there, part one. Part two, I'm surprised that they are really not running somebody against him because strong, because most of them really don't like him. He's just there. They just like having a Republican in the White House. Um, and that's where, it's, oh, and the third thing I'm gonna say and then pass it off is, while I, I will go with, I wish the coronavirus had never happened. If we had to go through this, God damn it, why couldn't it have been last September? Because <laughs> this election cycle would look so different this year if this had happened in September, last September. That is all. I'm off my soapbox as a historian. But, <laughs> Alexa, turn off. I, I don't think that we owe it to anybody, but I think that we do have a responsibility to tell the truth in real time. Mm. You know, Nina Simone said um, the artists are the people who, who writes the time. So I think we need, to, as an artist, we, we probably should write something because the truth gets distorted. You know, the narrative changes if we do not till you know if we don't po if we don't poetize it uh make it a song or make it art or, or whatever and i think who who better to to tell the story than us the people mm -hmm. who are here the people who is affecting you know it's a better it's a truth telling situation and i think that even if we're not ready to share right now we can pencil it down pin it down type it down do something yeah nice we have a responsibility. Yeah. I hear that. Not a debt, if that makes sense. That's that. Yeah. So, damn. I think that's it. I yeah. think that's this has been a great conversation, yo. And I hope yeah. that all folks that are been a part of this this discussion here in the Zoom, mm -hmm. also everybody that's uh, been in and out on Facebook, like we appreciate y'all a really uh needed space it wasn't even planned to be mm -hmm. honest i gotta be real like this these past couple of weeks have been rough rough yep. me like rough 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 um even getting ready for this event 
getting um, everything together and just to have my sisters come together and just open up a space to be vulnerable and talk and be honest and open it's it's so needed and it's it's very much appreciated i think that right now we are <laughs> way over time we but, are um I, we you know by um way of what am i trying to say we normally open up the floor at the end for anyone who feels inclined to want to perform I don't want to take that opportunity away. So if anyone is like burning with a performance that they want to go ahead and share, by all means, just let us know in the chat. But if not, I feel very, very, very okay with uh, closing things out with how things have gone tonight. I think um, all of you had very, very important perspectives and especially from my position as another black woman out here who's an artist, also a full-time worker, this has been extremely validating and I know I've gained a lot. So I hope that how I feel has also been a majority mm -hmm. feeling out there. Um, any last words from y'all that y'all wanna kind of leave people with before we kind of dip out? Um, I wanna say thank you. To be honest thank with you. you. Thank you, first of all, you, Charity, for the conversation. Of course. Ace in the conversation. Thank Sherry and Kaniki for, again, the space in the conversation. Um, I mean, since the, the inception of the show and everything um, that's come with it and, you know, involving me in this, but also I, I want to extend the thank you to the people who are actually, who've been here with us every week, who are yeah. with us on Facebook Live, who are, active and asking us questions and engaging with our with us and with our features you know it's one thing for us to have the you know to have the conversation it's something else for for us to acknowledge that we see you guys we hear you guys <laughs> you know um and that you know we want you to be engaged with us and and you know use this as a space to you know not just put your poems out, but get whatever's whatever's in your heart out there when we when we give you the space to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've had some people come through here and do some dope poems, and we have some people who have come in and just asked some really thought provoking questions. So I didn't want to leave without acknowledging that at least. You know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have a thank you, and I feel I, I thank you too, and I feel better. It's good. It's good to talk, and I I implore um, implore. Um, Sherry to, to, to think about that and, and be open and talking and, and know that you have some good supportive ears that things can fall on and I have been that person too I'm a very private person mm -hmm. and um, yeah some, I mean that's what we're here for I really believe that's why God put us here for each mm -hmm. other to, to be a listening ear even if it's just to listen and with being listening is support mm -hmm. you know? it is <laughs> very much it I is. want to um, read this comment that's in here that analysis dropped about how he is uh, engaging in self-care during the uh, quarantine. And I quote, online open mics. I've been a junkie, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Staying up late for them, getting up early. I loved going around the world and building, building poetry family across the countries. I've been spitting in Australia, England, interviewed in South Africa and hung out with our fam around the US. It's been therapeutic, the props, the mutual sharing, the support, the love and respect for Poem for Jarrell, et cetera. Plus he's binge watching some series because he can't watch sports. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I thank y'all and I love y'all. And I know that I could call on y'all, but I also know that everybody's dealing with their own stuff. So I'm like, eh. And that's the mistake that we all make. Cause like Danielle said, you act like we can't concentrate on more than one thing at a time. True. <laughs> I had to learn, I had to learn over the last, you know, five, five years or so, even the last five years. That yeah. I'm, I will make space for other people to come to me with stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And I, I can make emotional space for that. But if I don't have it, I'll tell you I don't have it. Mm -hmm. But I can make emotional space if you need to, like, I just need to talk. Mm -hmm. Here's something, okay, cool. I can do that. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah I think these, these you know, I, what I really love about this space, I, I, I think, um, 
it's important to have these conversations, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is definitely we, necessary tonight. We, you know, we leave, we go into our lives tomorrow, and we mm-hmm. feel like our experiences are so boxed in and so unique and so just our own. But there's so many people out there that need to have this validation and need to understand that there are, are thousands, millions of artists out here that are going through the same fucking thing. Thousands mm-hmm. of millions of Black female artists, female identifying artists out here going through the same thing. And to hear other folks just talking, sharing poems, and and and, and touching on topics that are messy, uncomfortable, you know, but it's healing. It's healing. So mm-hmm. I appreciate y'all doing y'all's thing, coming mm-hmm. through, doing thank what y'all you. do oh so well and oh so swell. Mm-hmm. And I just want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for stepping to the plate mm-hmm. when uh, my feature, you know, became y'all. It's, <laughs> it's cool. It's all right. Uh, just, we love it. Yeah. So I'm gonna just. I think if anyone wanted to share, I'm sorry. I think we just no. gonna put it here. I think I didn't see here. any. I didn't see anything. Um, I will make this week? announcement. Next week is from behind the microphone, hosted by the one and only Simply Sherry, featuring. Drum roll. I know. I know. The awesome and amazing from Austin City Slam. Christopher Michael. Oh, shit! It's going to be such a great conversation. I'm so excited about this. Yes, that is our From Behind the Microphone next week. If you if you have already signed up on our list, you are already, um, you will get the link at noon on Sunday uh, to, to, to join the um, to join the Zoom conversation with Christopher Michael. If you are joining us on Facebook, Go to keepthemikeon.com, keepthemikeon.com, and you can um, register for our uh, register to our website. And every Sunday at, at 12 o'clock, I send out the Zoom link. And if you didn't hear who was featuring, you didn't see the social media who's featuring is included in the link. So yes, yeah, so next Sunday is from behind the microphone with Christopher Michael. So dope. So dope. Uh, wait a minute. If y'all, if, if anybody who's on who doesn't know who this is, I advise you to go to go to YouTube, look him up, watch a couple videos, then come back on Sunday. Come back on Sunday for this. Uh, this is good. We've had yeah, had some amazing people on this show. Yeah. I'm so excited. Also, get your life together. If you don't know, you need to find no out together. Do your research. <laughs> <laughs> also tomorrow night um, on the Bus Boys and Poets Live on IG, I will be hosting Jamal St. John. So please enjoy me over there on Bus Boys and Poets Live on Instagram. Oh Jamal shit! Yes. Damn, yes. Damn, yes. Damn, you <laughs> him him last week. We had him here last week on my segment. And yep. so if you want more poems, go go hit up Bus Boys tomorrow. Cause yeah. You will get he, he he will give you life. He will give you poems. Let's go. All of the life. All mm-hmm. of the life, all of the life. <laughs> all of the life. So Folks will not stop us. We are yes. keeping this shit going. We're keeping the space going. And it's a beautiful thing. You can't stop. Won't stop, son. Can't stop. Yeah. Won't stop. Hey. And y'all definitely wanted to subscribe to the YouTube, to the um to the Facebook page. And um, because I already know who I got coming in July. Well, who, oh, can yeah. Sherry, who do you have coming in July? You so black, Teresa Ooh. the Songbird. Uh, yay! Oh. I miss her <laughs> so much. Yeah, I got song. <laughs> so keep up with us. Um, we hope to see everyone again next week. Uh, we love y'all. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Um, Wash your hands, wear your mask. Wash your hands, wear your mask. Feel free not to educate anybody on racism in America because this oh, yeah. is white work now. We've Check done- in on your strong friends. Check in on your folks. Check in on your folks. And we will see y'all next week. Stay safe. I love y'all. Bye, y'all. Good night. White baby. Thank y'all. Bye. Team, don't leave. Team, don't leave. Did Kaniki okay. already log off? Oh, yes. Hell. Yes, she did. You can bring her yes, back. Yes, she did. It's all okay. Right. It's all right. All right, because um, she's the one that didn't see what I said. All right, so. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Are you going to tell her to come back in?
No, I'm gonna tell Charity you might want to cut the live. Yeah, cut the live. Oh, <laughs> that part. <laughs> oh, this is where it gets real personal, y'all. We're about to go on. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, I everybody. Know. I'm cutting off the live in three. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm trying. I'm gonna go into the. I'm going into our regular chat to tell her to come back into the Zoom. Okay. okay. Except for the fact I can't find. Got it. Two. One.